Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel English Literature. Today we are going to talk about William Caxton. And who was he? He was the printer. He was a printer who brought printing machine in England. And you know we have already talked about that printing machine. The discovery of printer is very important factor in the growth of renaissance and circulating the ideas. The hand written copies you cannot circulate among so many people. But with the discovery of printing machine or with the discovery of press by William Caxton, English renaissance just attained a glorious position and also at the same time English literature. So William Caxton was not only a printer or publisher but at the same time he was a translator. He translated many books in vernacular language and today we will talk about talk in details about this person. William Caxton 1421 to 1491. Now he was a businessman, critic, writer, translator and printer. William Caxton is most celebrated for establishing the first printing press in England. In English Renaissance, we talk about this in details. The talk about the role of printing press in accelerating the growth of Renaissance. Now, as a translator, publisher and printer, he exerted an important influence on English literature. Caxton was born in Kent sometime between 1415 and 1422. Beside the information he documents in the prologues and epilogues to his manuscripts, little is known of his life and ancestry. So how we come to know about Caxton? When Caxton published some works or um, translated some work, he was in the fashion of putting a prologue and epilogue to his manuscript. And there at the uh, beginning or at the end, he just says something about the book and something about himself. And from those notes, we have come to know about Caxton. He became the source of his own history. Now his parents are thought to have been influential because they gained an apprenticeship for their son to Robert Lurch, a oldest silk merchant. Now, after Lard's death in 1441, Caxton moved to Brussels. In Wars, the capital of Flanders. What is it? It is a thriving center for trade. So, Caxton's early life started as a businessman. In Brussels, the prosperous merchant traded in textiles, particularly silk and wool, as well as luxury goods such as manuscript. So, we have known that the time of when Caxton was born, Renaissance was at its foot, and that time exploration trading was popular, and in that exploration, in that trade, Caxton has a role. She get involved with those, and what was the uh, things to be traded? Silk, wool, textile, luxury goods, and also manuscripts. Caxton was appointed as governor of the English nation of merchant adventure. Now you can fo uh, find that Caxton life part by part is gradually going to the life of to be a printer. But at the beginning he was not a printer. Around 1470 he left the post of government and met Margaret of York, the sister of England's King Edward IV. Then in, in the England's throne there was King Edward IV and his sister was Margaret and he was at the same time wife of Charles of Bold, Duke of Burgundy. So Duke of Burgundy's wife. She was also at the same time Duke of Burgundy's wife. The Duchess hired Caxton to be her financial advisor and to acquire and translate a book for her. The first book he asked Caxton to translate was the La Requel de Historia de Troyes. In a way, the history of Troyes. So the da and so Caxton was at first a businessman, then he was appointed as a governor of English National Merchant Adventure. It was also uh, related to merchant, um, merchandise and trade. And now from that his life changed to be the finance, 
became she became uh, sorry he became the financial advisor of margaret and he also started uh, translating book book translator for her sometime between 1470 and 1474 taxon travel to kolag where he met alrich jel this name is so tongue twister a priest from marinch a town where johans gutenberg had established the very first printing press okay so gutenberg's bible uh, if you um, get to the um, <coughs> video the bible here you find that uh, gutenberg's bible is also known as marinch's bible so guten there taxon met with a person who is a priest and alrich jel and he also had some knowledge of printing because johannes gutenberg established the first printing press there jel had established the printing press in cologne and is probably responsible for teaching taxon the skill so taxon gets the skill of printing from alrich jel Caxton by this time actually Caxton Caxton reached that source where the first printing press of Europe was established that was by Johannes Gutenberg around 1442-50 and he just reached that source and there he met that person who had already the experience and knowledge of that and that helped him a lot to establish his own printing press coming um, back in England. Caxton by this time has translated the history of Troy. What was the history of Troy that was already given to him by the Duchess to translate it. So he finished that work just then and under the Duchess of Burgundy's sponsorship, he set up his printing press in Burge around 1474. He hired a calligrapher and translator. Who is he? Coral Manson. So Coral Manson is the calligrapher and translator who Caxton hired to help him. And together in 1474, they printed copies of the History of Troy, the first book to be printed in the English language. And the book is dedicated to the Duchess. Who was the Duchess? The wife of Duke of Burgundy and also the sister of King Edward the Four. And she told Caxton to translate the book. And when he finished it, he published it with the help of his assistant, Conrad Manson, and dedicated the book to the Duchess. Now, Caxton's translation from the French, the game of play, of play of the chess, is also published in after that, 1476, two years gap. In 1474, he published the history of Troy, the first publication in his own printing. And then, in two years later, in 1476, he published this book. He translated and published the game of the play of chess. So, these all are actually translated um, publications. Toward the end of 1476, he returned to England. Now he just returned to England. He has already has so much knowledge and experience. He already established a printing press in Barge, in France, and now he returned to England and established his print press in Westminster. Kings and nobles and rich merchants were taxed on patrons because they also want to write uh, write things, write books about them. Sponsor to write about me that I am such a noble person, I am such a noble king, and some there are some kings who himself just uh, he himself like to ro write books, and they want to get them published and circulated among people. So they patronized Caxton's endeavor and supported him, backed him, and sometimes commissioned special books. So during his career, Caxton translated many works. I have already told you that Caxton was not only a printer or publisher; he was at the same time translator. From French, Latin, Dutch into English. From this language, he translated many books into English. We have already uh, get two names already. That was published in 1474 and then 1476. The Book of Troy and the Game of Chess, the Play of Chess, anything like that. Now he published a large number of service books and devotional book works also. He also printed nearly all the English literature available to him in his time. The famous literary pieces that was available to him that time, he published all them. Canterbury Tales, 1478 or 18, 1483, any time between them. And other poems by Chaucer, John Gower's Confessio Amantis. Okay, the Amantis, here it used to be in capital. Jacob's Ravoregni, Voragain. Jacob, 
Jacobus the Vragans, Golden Legend, Virgil's Annette, Sir Thomas Mallory's Mortity Arthur, and much of the contemporary famous literary pieces was translated, sorry, not translated, but published by Caxton. Lydgate's poems. He published Lydgate, John Lydgate's poem. He translated four books around and some of them were immensely long. By the time of his death, he had published about 100 items of various kinds. Okay. So, I feel that Caxton was a versatile genius. He was a man of um, profound work culture. Caxton's text includes prologues and epilogues that we have already told that he wrote which included his opinion of the work. So, that prologues and epilogues helps us to get a link of his life and at the same at the same time they were the criticism of the text of the book so you can say that caxton was the first critic of medieval england who wrote not only wrote a book but attached his criticism with that text so it was very helpful for us many of caxton's original manuscripts were currently housed in london's british museum Caxton's work had great value in English literature because it allowed the readers access to the contemporary literature in their language. You can say that he just collected them, he just saved them, secured them and gave them new thought, new tone and new look. He held the modern scholars in speculating an idea regarding the tastes, politics and culture of the later medieval society he lived in. So if Caxton's should not uh, sorry could not accumulate all those work and give them a proper safe and in safety maybe we don't get those words maybe we do, don't get the link of those words we come, do not come to know about those great medieval words so we must give our applause to Caxton for doing such things Caxton is to be credited with making Chaucer's work more rapidly and readily available to the general reading public of the time so not only for Chaucer, but for all the eminent personalities and writers who take endeavor to on that time to write something new, Caxton helped them, help those persons to get circulated, help those works to get circulated and people come to know about those persons. And obviously Chaucer was the main towering figure of medieval literature. But apart from Chaucer, through Caxton's writing, we come to know about many other persons also like John Gower, Lydgate. So, you can feel that how much Caxton and his printing press and his translating power and his criticism was valuable to learn and discuss about medieval literature.